<laughs> okay, so today we're going to get back to looking at some reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Okay, and we're going to pick up looking at some more nucleophiles. to attack the carbonyl of an aldehyde or a ketone. Okay. Remember the one we looked at last time was the Grignard reagent. Okay. Today, we're going to start off by looking at water. And let's see how water reacts with the carbon. So let's start with this aldehyde here. Okay. Ethanol. And what we're going to do is, in addition to reacting it with water. We're going to throw in some H plus proton acid. Okay. So anytime you see this combination of H plus and water, okay, This can always be shrink wrapped into H3O plus, the hydronium ion. Okay? So anytime you see H3O plus, keep that in mind on any exam, even MCAT or whatever. If you see H3O plus, feel free to split it into two into these pieces here. And that will help you a little bit with the chemistry. Okay? So before we go ahead and tackle what goes on here. Let's come over here and do a little analysis. Okay, so a little sideshow over here. What I want to do is compare that molecule with this one here, where we react it with H plus. H plus is an acid. What do you think is going to react with that H plus on it? It's sticking out. What's going to react with this? What's going to attack this? The lone pair. Okay, the lone pair up here. Okay. So that oxygen will get protonated. give us this here. Okay? So we can call this here a protonated carbonyl. Okay? And note when you protonate the carbonyl Oxygen now has three bonds. Okay, keep track of it. Write it down so you don't forget. Oxygen, when it has three bonds, will always carry a positive charge. Okay, oxygen neutral is always two bonds. Okay, so what we want to do is compare these two structures and see what the difference is. Okay, so here, this carbonyl, we have a dipole moment toward that oxygen. Okay. The oxygen is more electronegative. So that sets up what? Partial charges. So 
we'll get the delta plus and delta minus like that. Okay? So that makes the carbon, what do we say the carbon then is? Because it has the delta plus? Electrophilic, very good. So the carbon is electrophilic. Let's compare that to down below when we add this proton. Okay? When we add the proton, what happens? Well, the oxygen gets a positive charge. So, oxygen with a positive charge now becomes more electronegative. Oxygen doesn't like to have a positive, does it? So, what's it going to do? It's going to pull electrons toward it more to help quench that positive charge. So that's going to make this dipole here what? What would you say about that dipole now? It should be what? Really strong. Really strong. Okay? Pay attention here. Okay? Missing a lot of notes. Without taking things down. So this dipole is going to be very strong, stronger than up here. So that's going to make this carbon have what? A gigantic delta plus compared to that one. Okay. This still has a delta minus, which we don't care about. But now the carbon has a bigger delta plus. So we would say what? This carbon is what? More electrophilic than that one, right? Because I get a greater positive charge. Okay? So it's more electrophilic in the protonated state. Okay? And if it's more electrophilic, what's that going to mean? If I bring in a nucleophile, what's that going to mean? Is it going to be more or less reactive? More. more reactive. Okay. So this will be much more reactive with an electrophile. Okay. So this is why we add H plus to the carbonyl to make the aldehyde or ketone much more reactive. Okay. So it's reactive like this, but it's going to become much more reactive with the proton on it, okay? So, wanted to get this out of the way first before we now come back to that. Any questions on that? Okay. Hope you're taking good notes. See some people daydreaming in here. All right, so let's come back here. So, what's going to be the first step of the mechanism here now? to attack the H plus, okay? just what we just did here. Okay. So, let's attack the proton. Okay, so now we've made the carbonyl more reactive. help get rid of that positive charge. Okay, and it 
does by converting it to an alcohol. See, that's the driving force of the reaction to get rid of that positive charge. Now let's draw what we have left on here. So now the water has added on. And note how many bonds are on oxygen here? Three. So that grants us what? That positive charge. Okay, the same reason we had a positive here. So now this oxygen is now what? Very what? Electronegative. So it's squeezing in the bonding electrons. Okay. And let's focus on the hydrogen here, if it's squeezing those in, it's making that have a big delta plus. So what's it going to make that hydrogen? Very acidic. Okay. So now, if I bring in any base, it should be able to remove that hydrogen. What could I use again as a base? Another water molecule. Okay. So now I just have a acid base reaction to get rid of that hydrogen. same carbon. Okay? They're on the same carbon, so that's gem. Okay. Another name for a gem diol. It's also called a hydrate. Okay? So whenever I have two OHs on the same carbon, it's also called a hydrate, because I got water in a sense on there. So if I removed the water somehow, I could get back to my aldehyde there. Okay, so any questions on this mechanism here? This is the initial mechanism you need to master in this chapter. Because we're going to use this mechanism over and over in this chapter. Okay. Any questions at all? So our our objective is to go from to go to make the diol. That's what we're trying Yeah. So if I give you any carbonyl and this mixture, you should be able to draw the mechanism to end up with the gem diol. Okay. So now you know. I'm going to get a gem diol. Now you have to take through the pathway to get there. Okay. So, <coughs> kind of summarize this. So 
suppose you had acetophenone and reacted it with this H plus and water. Can you just draw the product without going through the mechanism? Okay, a little bit easier that way. What would you do to get the product? What would change? The carbonyl. What was the carbonyl become? Becomes the dial. Okay. So all the chemistry is occurring here. Okay, not on benzene. We're done with benzene chemistry for now. And it doesn't occur on this CH3. Okay? So all the chemistry we're doing is on that carbonyl. exam be able to handle both sets of questions okay if I just give this reaction to you and ask you to draw the product boom no problem right if I give this reaction to you and ask you to draw the mechanism you got to draw out those couple of steps that we just went through okay so I would encourage you to practice those steps so that you can make sure that you can do that on your own. Maybe practice it with this reaction. Okay? Then if you want to come to me and check, I'll be glad to check how you do it. Okay? And correct your people. Okay, so that's our first nucleophile. Let's go on to our second nucleophile. second one's going to be this. <clears throat> what kind of molecule is that? An alcohol. An alcohol. So here, we're going to react an alcohol with an aldehyde or ketone. Let's look at an example. first, which is an aldehyde, and we'll make up the alcohol, so we'll make R to be the CH3, and stoichiometry-wise, we will need two of those and some acid catalyst. And then let's compare that one to this one here, acetone, and do the same reaction. take you through the <clears throat> mechanism at this point, I want you to get used to what kind of products you're going to get from this. Okay? So, here, what we get is first an initial product. converted to this OH. See that? 
and we get the same thing down below. similar to our last reaction. Remember the last one we had two OHs here. Well, this thing can react again. Okay. And this is where the second alcohol will come on. So let's label those. Okay, hopefully that was obvious to you. Okay. Well, what are these molecules over here called? Okay, they're not called gemdiols. Okay. This one here is what's called an acetal. And this one down here is called a keto. Okay. So the way you remember the names, acetals come from aldehydes, A, A. Ketals come from ketones, K, K. Yeah. In the middle, you get this intermediate product. Okay, so we're halfway there with that one, so we put hemi acetal. Hemi means half. And then this one down here. you to get familiar with what kind of molecules are forming, okay? They're a little bit different, okay? And this is the kind of chemistry, a lot of this chemistry goes on in our bodies, okay? In forming acetals and ketones, okay? So this is good biochemistry stuff if you go on for something like that, okay? Well, let me erase and let's do some exercises here. Ask you a few questions on this molecule. 
Okay, let's look at the questions. Okay, I ask you first of all, what kind of molecule is that? What would you say? You have four options. <laughs> what kind of molecule is that? What do you think? Carboxylic acid. kind of molecule is that? We just covered four different molecules. What's that? Ketone. You think it's a ketone? Why do you think it's a ketone? <clears throat> Very good. Very good. Okay. So you have two alcohols. What were the alcohols? Two ethanols that are on the same carbon. Okay. So that is a ketone. And the ketone came from what? The ketone. So I can dissect a molecule into what it came from. What was on that carbon there? Carbonyl. Have a carbonyl. So there's my ketone, and my alcohols are right there. So that's what I originally worked with to get that. See how you work backwards. Okay. Does that make sense to you then? Yeah. A little bit better? Okay. Let's do another one. exercise. Take a minute. Tell me which of the four that is. Acetal, ketal, hemi. And see if you can break it down into what it came from. A little more challenging this time. Just keep it to yourself. What's the first thing you want to do to break this molecule down? Where do I want to look at? Okay. There's two oxygens. Where do I want to look at? I want to look at the carbon in between them. Mm -hmm. See that? Does that carbon have a hydrogen on it? Yeah. Yeah. It does. Okay. So, what kind of molecule must this be? It's an acetone. It came from an aldehyde. Okay? 
So if the little carbon between the two oxygens has a hydrogen, it's an acetone. Good to see somebody write that down. If there's no hydrogen, then it would have been a ketone. Now, let's dissect it down to see what it came from, okay? So what can I do? Here's the easy analysis. Go to the two bonds with the oxygen, and let's break them. Let's break them. So if I break them, what molecule do I have left over? Okay. Well, I got that piece. See that? And what other piece do I have? Let me draw the carbons out. Well, I got that piece there. Okay. So this here was this little stick here. Two carbons. Now what do we do to finish out the molecules? This must be what? <laughs> the alcohol. So I put hydrogen where the oxygen was. And what about this one here? What do I do with this one? Make this a what? A carbonyl. So here the alcohol, okay, was a different one. It was a diol. So these two oxygens ended up adding on to that carbon to give you this kind of acetone. Okay? Probably didn't see that, okay, but that's a new one for us. Did anybody get that? Anybody get that at all? Half of it, that's okay. It's a little progress. Better than that. Okay? Any questions on how these two formed this one here? Okay? What I challenge you to do over the weekend is to do the mechanism for that. Just have one oxygen attack and then have the second oxygen attack. Okay? Let's see how far you can get. Okay. Let's see here. Let's try one more. We're going to hold off the mechanisms for these today. We'll do them on Monday. Make sure you don't miss Monday. starting carbonyl compound. Where would I put the carbonyl in here? Where does it go? 
That carbon, this is always the carbon in question. We ask if there's a hydrogen, and that's the carbon that gets the carbonyl. So we have cyclohexanone. And then what was the alcohol we used? <coughs> the ethanol. Okay. So in this case, we only added one of those on. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. So this is preliminary to acetals and ketals. On Monday, we'll go through a very long painstaking mechanism of how these form, okay, to practice the other mechanisms we did earlier.